Welcome back, guys. Today we're going to do a discussion about a fictional character called Max Headroom. Created in the 1980s, it was advertised as the first computer-generated or CGI TV presenter. It was actually a parody, uh, not actually a computer-generated in, uh, individual. It was an actor portraying this, and it was quickly uh, used as a symbol of counterculture because the character would rant against corporations and those in power and control of the world, politicians, groups like that, just the most powerful and corrupt individuals who were running society at the time and still are to this day. Now, it was actually an actor wearing prosthetics and it was created by a team as sort of comedy, but it has since been adopted by both countercultural figures who are uh, anarchist and anti-authoritarian, as well as white supremacists as a symbol of fighting the global conspiracy that they believe is out to get them. Now, the most interesting thing about this adoption of Max Headroom is that it happened in the Internet age. And during the Internet age, white supremacists from around the globe became more interconnected. This happened in the late 1980s, continued through the 90s, and continues to this day. Uh, But it's of particular importance because during the 1990s, an event happened which sort of unified Western white supremacists all around it. And that is the Serbian genocide of the Bosnian people, and also against Albanians in the region now known as Kosovo. Now, this is something that we're really going to focus on, because this character, invented in the 1980s, had a severe impact on the most recent elections in Kosovo, an Albanian uh, ethnic country located in Eastern Europe in the region formerly known as the Balkans, currently known as the Balkans, actually. Serbian nationalists in this region conducted genocides against the native Bosnians and were attacked by NATO in response to try to get them to stop the genocides. They also uh, underwent the same things in Kosovo and to this day claim that Kosovo is not an independent country and is under the authority of Serbians. There are significant Serbian minorities in the northern regions of Kosovo, however, the country does remain universally Albanian ethnic uh, as a majority. There are significant Serbian minorities in northern Kosovo, uh, and they are separatist movements who aim to separate these regions from Kosovo as a whole and reunite with the Serbian nation. The Serbian government officially regards all of Kosovo as their property and wants to reclaim the entire territory, especially the northern provinces which have significant Serbian minorities. The Serbian minorities in these regions have a tendency to frame themselves as an oppressed group who are having their Serbian heritage denied and being victimized by the Albanian ethnics who form the majority in the region. Recently, they engaged in protest against the government after refusing to take part in the elections, saying that their rights were being suppressed. NATO security forces had to step in to stop these protests. There's been long-standing enmity between the Serbians who exist in these areas and the NATO alliance because of NATO's efforts to stop the genocides being carried out by the Serbian government in the mid-1990s. In addition, the Serbians are a Slavic ethnic group with deep ties to Russia historically, and currently the leader of Serbia is very close to Vladimir Putin, the leader of Russia. Russia is, of course, currently involved in a war against its neighbor Ukraine. Two reasons it is constantly used to try to justify its invasion of that nation have been the removal of white supremacist elements inside the government and to stop the expansion of NATO as an alliance. There are several battalions within the Ukrainian army formed of foreign fighters, notably the Azov Battalion. Many of these groups were formed as Max Headroom Alliances, which are white supremacist alliances which use the 1980s fictional character as a mascot of sorts. The original use of Max Headroom as a symbol of white supremacist resistance rose up in the aftermath of Jeffrey Epstein's trial and apparent suicide. The reason they began using this character was his critique of corporations, the finance industry, and just in general, elites who supposedly ran the world. Now, while these are valid criticisms of the current regime and system, They are not directed towards Jeffrey Epstein and most of his close associates so much as they are addressed towards certain individuals they believe are attacking the white race and attempting to elevate minorities in their place as the de facto majority population of the major Western countries in the world. Now, while many of these Max Headroom types have misdirected grievances, the fact does remain that there are ties between Jeffrey Epstein and the heads of several states, including Russia. 
The issue is that they have now placed themselves on the side of the NATO alliance, an organization made up of states whose heads almost entirely all have direct ties to Jeffrey Epstein. So the issue is in then trying to fight this global cabal that they feel is running things, they have placed themselves directly in the line of fire as pawns for that very cabal in its conflict against another faction, Putin and his oligarchs. Now, another individual who has close ties to Jeffrey Epstein is Luis Rubiales, the head of the Spanish Soccer Association. The issue this individual has recently come into the media light for is forcing one of his soccer players who won the World Cup, the Women's World Cup, to kiss him, an act which she did not consent to. The entire Spanish football world has come to his defense and tried to apologize for him because they're all deeply connected to the abuse of women through Jeffrey Epstein. Now that their supply of young women to abuse and manipulate and force into performing horrific acts has been limited due to Jeffrey Epstein's suicide and Gislaine Maxwell's arrest, they are really, really showing their true colors in public. They're forcing women that they work with, that they come to close contact with, that they normally would not abuse, that they are psychopathic and abusive individuals who love nothing more than to hurt and manipulate women. This ties back into Ukraine in the way it always does, through Jeffrey Epstein. He was deeply connected to Rubiales and to the leader of Ukraine and to Vladimir Putin, the leader of Russia. Now that he is out of the picture, you're seeing them all come to the light and expose who they really are. It won't be long before powerful politicians in Serbia and Ukraine both do the same thing Rubiales did and have those around them move things around and try to cover it up so that there's no public outcry. Now, the easiest way to cover up sexual assaults and other things of that nature is one simple method. Yep, you guessed it, more wars. I believe that very soon the Serbian government is going to attempt to invade Kosovo, similar to how Russia invaded Ukraine, and they're going to use the oppressed Serbian minorities in northern Kosovo as an excuse to do so in order to cover up the offenses that they are committing against women. We saw during the breakup of Yugoslavia that many Serbian individuals were given a chance to hold power over women and other people would engage in some of the most heinous acts you could possibly imagine a human committing. How can we be sure that some of these individuals who are now still in power in Serbia and in the northern Kosovo Serbian community, how can we be sure that they ever stopped? Once they got a taste of that type of power, of the ability to engage in that level of sadism and to cause harm to individuals on that scale, why would they ever stop? If they found that they liked it, I truly believe that there was one resource they could have turned to in order to satisfy that dark urge. The resource provided by Jeffrey Epstein. The ability to find young women and at times children torture them and exploit them in increasingly depraved ways. And now that the elites of the world, and in particular of Eastern Europe, no longer have access that they previously did to out these urges and frustrations on individuals that they could then use their connections to cover up, we're going to see them do it more and more publicly, just like we saw in Western Europe with the Spanish Soccer Association's president. Now to tie it all back into Max Headroom. Max Headroom was an individual invented in the early 80s as a fictional character to sort of capitalize off the counterculture movement engaging in the youth at that moment, the anti-corporate culture. Now, in 1987, there was one unauthorized transmission of Max Headroom broadcast across airwaves all throughout the Western world. Who did this? It's very simple. An agent who understood exactly what was going on in the world at that time. The old order was breaking up, the Soviet Union was falling apart, getting ready to dissolve, and they knew that now that all the world powers were going to coalesce around the one force that could keep them unified, Jeffrey Epstein's cabal of powerful individuals, politicians, entertainers, businessmen, all of these powerful forces around the world which gathered together to engage in satisfying their darkest, most base urges in a way that unified them all together and kept them bound so that no one individual could ever break off and go against the system. So that's going to be the video for today, guys. Thank you so much for stopping in to listen. I really had to get this off my chest because there's been so many uh, interesting events happening all around the world right now that all seem deeply connected that I really just want to point everything out, connect the dots for you so that you can see what's really going on. A lot of people are looking at this uh, Spanish soccer president's 
incident that he had as a singular event, but in reality, it's deeply connected to everything else that's going on. In addition, Max Headroom, while there's a lot of videos out there explaining to you what it is, why it's so popular, who appropriated it, I need you to really understand how the use of that one signal ties everything together in a way that I don't think a lot of people are pointing out. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.